And so, uh, another big story that was in the news is a lot of stuff that happened this week. Uh, the Paul Pierce thing. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody got to give me the background of what he did. I only got the, the summary. You can't trust summaries all the time. They leave stuff out, but from my understanding. So, you're going to get a summary of a summary. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga Paul Pierce out there doing his thing. That nigga, he went to, I don't know if it was a bachelor party, birthday party, either way it goes. There was some strippers, there was some smoke going on, and some drink. Pretty much. He got caught. Well, hell, he didn't get caught. He put it on live himself. So he didn't think he was doing anything wrong with his with his live. I'm guessing. Right? Honestly, I think that that situation is clear indication of what niggas would do when they intoxicated and being around women. <laughs> I think the one. I think he was like he felt like he, he was, was turning up. He was having fun. He felt like he was the man <laughs> at the moment. Yo, I need to let everybody know, nigga. I'm up right now, nigga. Look at all these bitches in here, nigga. I'm drinking too, nigga. I'm smoking. Like stupid. Like, yeah. Cancel this out. What y'all? What you think about that? I mean, like with, with with ESPN canceling them and, and, and that, you know, like I feel like anybody should be able to do what they want on their free time, of course, you know. But when it is when it does come to a brand and you and you're representing a company, yeah, then you know you kind of wrong for that, you know what I'm saying. But it, if it's something, if it's not really affecting the company in any type of way, and, and your brand, your brand can still remain, you know, successful. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like, you know, you can do whatever you want on your own time. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like you should be, you know, still caring. Like, if you, if you want to go on live and do whatever you want to do, I feel like he should be able so to So he should still have his job. Well, I don't even know if that's the reason why he got fired. Maybe it was some other stuff mm -hmm. back then. But you think he should have kept his job. He shouldn't be fired for that alone. Well, I mean, because because y'all was, was just telling me, too, that he uh, he was an announcer. I didn't know he was an uh one of those announcers. Yeah, I think he's like a uh, anchor sports. Yeah, yeah. That, that plays a big part because if he wasn't doing that, I don't feel like it was a good reason to fire him. You know what I'm saying? Over that. You know what I'm saying? But if it's representing, like I said before, if it's representing a company and, and, you know, they stand for something, then I feel like, you know, he was in the wrong for that. Right, right, right. I don't know. I think it's just clear stupidity. Like, at the end of the day, there was no point. Like, you went on live yourself. Now, it would have been different if somebody caught you with a camera and you doing what you, you know, somebody was in the party and they was just filming you. Oh, look, it's Paul Pierce up in here. <laughs> then you went on live yourself. So, like, it really, you canceled yourself. So, I feel like the company probably was looking like, how stupid can you be? Get the fuck out of here. You're <laughs> fired. Like, get your, get your shit. Like, Get your little, get your little, your little plant. It's like when everybody quit, they always got like a plant they got to grab. <laughs> get your plant <laughs> and get the fuck out of here. Right, so, so we look at that. We just talked about DMX. We just talked about Derek Jackson, and we just talked about Paul Pierce. All black men, exactly, uh, in the industry that you know at some point they got some type of prestige. Everybody loves DMX. We all love when Paul Pierce play. People love Derek Jackson's advice. Uh, for you two that's going about trying to get into the media, trying to be personalities, is that scary y'all as black men? It seems like you, one struggling with addiction, one is struggling with, I guess, his platform and having influence and abusing his power. The other one is probably dealing with pride. Maybe you want to show people, I'm, Paul, I'm still Paul Pierce. What about you? Are you guys scared of that? Like, is, is really this whole stardom and being an influencer thing really choked out to what it, what it seems? Like, I, I wouldn't be scared of that because, I mean, like, I, I feel like you have, a, have to have a strong mind. You have to have a good mindset going into that. You know, if you're a wild person, you gonna it's just going to enhance it when you get on. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever it, money, it doesn't really change the person. It just enhances the person, I think. You know, the person's still going to be that person. So if you're a wild person that like to do parties and all that, when you get money and you get on, you're going you gonna to be that same person. It ain't like you're going to stop doing it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be the same person you are. You know, but when you when you got a, a good head on your shoulders and you and you handling business and you got a good mindset, when you get in the game, I feel like you're going to carry that with you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That makes sense. Oh, shit. Addiction is one thing because, like, let's be, like, you know, like Tanner said, it does enhance you. And it does enhance your habits and stuff like that, because you know it's sad to say DMX he was introduced to a uh, drug, you know, at an early age, so that was always a part of his life even before the fame. Um, far as like you know all the other stuff, like for me personally, like I think you just be who you are. Like it is what it is. Like a, a company can't be mad if you just being the person that that you were when they signed you. Mm -hmm. I think it's when people start to act when they when they feel like they gotta act different. You know, right when they're about to get the fans, then they start trying to change up and, and start hiding who they really are. Mm -hmm. 
I think the best people in the industry are the people that they are who they are on and off camera, and they still get they still benefit from it. So just be who you gonna be. Like it is what it is. And y'all think it's that simple? Like you, the camera's in your face. You can be who you are twenty four seven. Like it will well, switch up. Y'all think it's just well. Crazy? I know. I know a lot of companies they hire like PR teams, and you know a lot of uh, famous people they hire PR teams, management, and all that type of stuff. So a lot of times, you know. Uh, if you're if you have the right people around you, they're gonna make sure you're directed in the areas that you need to be directed to. So say if I'm a personality and I'm always about you know I'm always cussing, profanity, you know disrespectful of women, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna put me or sign me up for something that's gonna be like okay. And that's a representation. Yeah, that's a representation. They're not gonna sign me up for something to where I'm gonna be around in a group full uh, room full of women when they know that everything I do is so vulgar and disrespectful. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I think that just you know. Just be who you gonna be. Uh, I feel like those are the things you can see, right? Don't yeah. don't put it don't put them in a room full of women. Those are things that you can identifiably see and be like, okay, that's not a good position. But I think we can all attest to situations that we wanted. I wanted that promotion in the job. I wanted that that car. I wanted that girl. Whatever the case may be. And then when you got it, you realize it wasn't what it what no, it yeah, was. So like that. so that, <laughs> but those are the things I feel like that that's not uh, identifiable. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's not the girl in there. It's the, dang, this fame brought something that I didn't even know was going to come with it. Uh, the personalities that I got to deal with, the the money, managing money that I've never had to manage before, or the women doing their stuff, I never had to deal with that. What about the, the unidentifiable things? Not just the things y'all can control and stay away from whenever you can. What about the thing that fame will, that will come that we don't even know? Yeah. What about those things? I think it's all about preparation, you know. Like, how do you prep for something that you don't even know? It's like you, you gotta, side. you gotta. Sometimes you gotta prep at the moment, you know. You gotta just kind of weigh things out, see how things are. Like, like for instance, if, if now you're dealing with a large amount of money, all right. Let me hold on. Stop. Wait. Pause everything first. Let me get an accountant. Let me get somebody that gonna handle this, you know, and make sure you you kind of prep right then and there. Like, but if you just just going off the the edge and just doing whatever. Yeah, and there's really no structure into what you're doing, then things are going to uh, eventually fall apart. I think you have to prep yourself, and, and sometimes you got to prep yourself at the moment. You know, you, you see it coming real fast. Okay, hold on, let me slow down. Let me, all right, what am I going to gain from this? What am I going to lose? Like, how, how's people going to perceive this? Or, or, you know what I'm saying? So your approach for dealing with uh, unidentifiables is slow it down a little bit. When yeah. the thing's going fast, yeah. first of all you gotta stop okay. stop and work on your own time. You know, um, you know you know, work at your own pace, work on your own time and but make sure things is getting done right and make sure it's quality, you know what I'm saying? And not really uh, you know, just fast paced, just trying to get out and do things. Cause sometimes when you when you go so so much fast paced, you tend to uh, things start to go wrong, you start to miss some different things you need to do. I, I would say slow it down, figure out exactly what you need to do step by step, and then go from there. Yeah, that's good. Oh, shit, with me, man, shit, shit, roll with the punches. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll with the punches, shit. Like, really? like you know, this is a different approach. Yeah, yeah, we, we, <laughs> roll with the punches because it's like, you know, like people always tell me what they're going to do if they hit the lottery. You don't know what the fuck you're going to do when you hit the lottery. Maybe somebody throw you 500, 500 million, you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to start a business. For what? You don't need no business. <laughs> Bro, people start business to get where you're at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't like to me, I just look at life like when it comes to like a big, uh, drastic change, I don't think nobody knows what they're going to do. Like, a drastic change is something that I think mentally nobody's prepared for. Gradual change, yeah. You know, like where you work toward towards it. Hell yeah, that's a that's that's a um, that's where you can kind of gauge on what's gonna happen. But uh, a drastic change, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I think that's funny, y'all. You guys' approach is to uh, the unexpected. Well, you know, unexpected is slow down over here and roll with the punches. That kind of leads me to my next question. But some, but some, well, not, not to cut you off, but some things people handle better with with certain things. Like he might be more comfortable and handle things better. Just, just going off the off yeah. the whim like that versus me, you know, and, and then vice versa with my situation with him, you know, like it it, it might just work better for that person. Yeah, I, I think what we don't we don't allow people to have, um, I guess other preferences. It might work best that he rolls with the punch and you slow it down because y'all complement each other. When you need to when uh, when LP needs to slow down, 
you come in when you need to keep rolling. You know, yeah. So I think a lot of people think, oh, see it just like I see it. When in reality, there's a beauty and a difference. Because it's like, I need you when I'm failing at this, and you need me when you're failing at that. I think it's a good marriage. Mm-hmm. And if people need to, we got to start looking at it that way. We don't all got to think the same. We all thought the same. All our stories would be the same and boring. Exactly.